Hi, Chris here from Tech Tablets with the Cube i10. I've been running some benchmarks here on the system just as part of my review process going through and just testing everything. So I'll let you know a couple of things I've just noticed here. So the eMMC is a N-card type MMC and this is one of the probably one of the worst ones you can get. Although the write and read rates here aren't exactly the worst I've seen though. They're not too bad. I mean, you can get really bad versions of this uh, type of eMMC and this one does 135 and almost 70 right there which isn't too bad the worst I've seen is about 45 and 35 so that's pretty slow but if you have a look at the 4k random reads and uh, the writes here the reads aren't too bad but the writes there they're very slow uh, but it doesn't seem to affect the performance of the tablet just using it at the moment it doesn't seem too bad at all here uh, now, I'll just show you a couple of other benchmarks here that are run, ran on the unit. So we have uh, 3D Mark scores actually surprisingly are quite good. Now this does have the Atom Z3735F, so it's a slower processor than the 3736, which clocks up to 2.16. This one only clocks up to 1.8 here. But even so, the scores that I got are actually better than the Chewy VI10, which surprised me. But that's probably down to the fact that because the tur it doesn't turbo as high as the other chip in the Chewy VI10, there's probably some more headroom here, temperature-wise, to allow the GPU to, to run higher or the, the CPU there to clock up higher. So hopefully this is going to load in the scores. It's just taking its sweet little time here. There we go. So you can see there that almost 9,000 on the iStore Extreme score. That is quite a good score there for a Bay Trail Atom. And almost 15,000 there as well on the iStorm Unlimited score in 3D Mark here. So both of those scores are really good. In fact, some of the highest I've seen, I think. Up, up there, definitely up there. So they're quite impressive. Now that is helped by the fact that this does have that lower resolution screen. So it's got that 1376 by uh, 768 resolution. So it's a lower resolution, and that does allow the graphics to, and you know, it's, it goes faster. It doesn't have to drive so many pixels there. Not like a 1080p screen or a high retina screen. So it's easier on the GPU, the Generation 7 Intel graphics there. Now if I move over and have a look now at, where is Internet Explorer, and show you the Geekbench 3 score. Also wasn't too bad at all. And I need to, actually, I'm going to go into desktop mode here. So I'll just get out of that, run the desktop mode. I should have both of them there bookmarked. So 2,302, sorry, this isn't Geekbench score. This is the Future Mark PC Mark 7 score there. And that's not actually a bad score as well. And here is the Geekbench 3 score there. So almost 800 points in single core. And 2,194 with a multi-threaded score there. Again, um, not a bad score there really for the Atom Z3735F. And once I get my review online, there will be links to this if you want to see this in more detail there, those benchmark scores. I will have links to those there. So I just test out a little bit of gaming here. Just try Asphalt 8. And now the screen seems to be the exact same panel that's in the Chewy VI 10, as I mentioned in my unboxing video. So Although the resolution is not a super high resolution retina screen, the brightness and the viewing angles of this IPS panel aren't bad at all. It's in fact the same screen that Microsoft use, used in the Surface RT. So the first RT Surface that came out, this is the screen here. No, I'm not 55 years old, but that's just what I'm entering here. Come on. So the graphics performance so far, what I've seen in 3D Mark is good for this tablet. Again, it's been helped by that screen resolution. So 
So far when comparing this tablet to the Chewy VI10, really it's very similar, um, but the Chewy VI10 does have a larger battery and it has a better front facing camera. This only has a VGA front facing camera and this has a 6800 milliamp hour battery where the Chewy has a 7800 milliamp battery. So you're getting probably about five hours of internet use out of this tablet here and on the Chewy you're looking close to probably about six hours or 20 minutes or so I think that I got from my review. That's with 40% brightness. Alright, so we can see here that um, gaming seems fine. I mean, Windows Store games definitely no trouble running any of those. I'll just test one more after this game, and that's Dungeon Hunter 5. Now, we'll have another video, I just need some time to prepare it with some Steam gaming here. So, we have Counter Strike, Dota 2. We'll test out uh, Team Fortress as well. So there's popular online games that people do like and still play and can run on this hardware. And I'll see how well that runs compared to the likes of the Chewy VI-10. So, so far, it, it doesn't seem bad at all, this tablet, considering the price. It's about uh, 130 US for this tablet and it's got a full size USB port. It doesn't have two like the Chewy VI-10 and you can get the keyboard dock for it as well so it turns it into a full 2-in-1 PC. As I mentioned the camera and the battery are the things that's got against it so far that I can see. So just move over now into Dungeon Hunter 5 and see how that one runs. Now yeah, I'm just going to pause the video here because it does take a while to load up this game. So I'm using an Xbox 360 controller here that I plugged into the USB port. It's nice and handy to have that full size USB port and like I always say that most, every tablet I think that at least runs Windows should have a full size USB port. Just mucking around with the adapters, the OTG adapters, it isn't the nicest thing, you always got to carry it around with you. So you can see the game's running just fine. Perfectly playable here. So, you know, the speakers are on 50%, that's 100%. So, the speakers are, while well, they're loud enough, they do sound like most tablet speakers are uh, quite bad, really. Tinny, no no bass to them whatsoever. Very trebly, just tinny, not the best, really. But at least they do have a bit of volume to them, unlike some of the other tablets I've heard, like the first Chewy VI-8 that had some horrible speakers on it that weren't that loud at all. So I'll quickly just go over into Internet Explorer now. Plug and the mouse again and just load up a few websites here so the keyboard uh, dock that I have at the moment is actually for the Chewy VI-10 I don't have the cube one that they built specifically for this tablet don't have that one just yet and it doesn't seem to want to work which is interesting probably because it is for the Chewy and not for the Cube. So if I redock it, if 
I can. There we go. It is working again, so that's good. So I don't know what happened there. It just disconnected itself. So running, let's have a look at bbc.co.uk. bbc.com and see how quickly that loads up. I haven't visited this site before, so nothing's cached. So it might take a little while. It's taking a long time here. Don't have the fastest internet connection, and that will definitely have something to do with it. Okay, so. Once it's loaded up, just like all other Baytrail tablets running Internet Explorer, it's very smooth there. There's no touch lag or anything with the screen that I can detect. It seems to be very good, very smooth. And you can do the old, whoops, multitasking. And have one browser open up here, the other one in here. And that is all smooth, it works just fine. And with the keyboard there, I recommend you probably get, need to get the Q1 so you don't have that disconnection issue I just faced just then. But it's very practical because you can type on it quite well. So good for documents, forums or whatnot, internet, somewhere where you need to do some typing. Because just using the touch screen all the time, touch screen keyboard, I find can be quite annoying. So using that all the time, while it's fine, um, is a little tricky when you want to write a lot, actually. Oh, the screen didn't turn around on me just then. No, the rotation is not locked. It's unlocked. It's interesting. Ah, oh, because I'm, okay, silly me, because I'm running split screen here that's the reason behind that so if I close all these down back on the desktop now it should let me do it there we go see not a problem all right so that's a quick hands-on there with the q by 10 in Windows I will have another up-and-coming video with hands-on in Android so you can see the and two two benchmarks and the rest of those benchmarks I normally run there in Android so if you're interested in the tablet do keep an eye out for those. They'll be in the playlist. Thanks for watching the video and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.